guys, you welcome back. Thanks for clicking. So this man is going to tell us what he learned from Palestinian Muslims, Muslims in Palestine, the miracle of kindness. Let's check it out. I studied Arabic four hours a day, five days a week with my Palestinian professor, Omar Atman, in Jerusalem. We met in my house on Mount Scopus, overlooking the old city every morning. He would arrive with his books and something from his garden, olives, peaches, apricots, or a bag of pistachios he would patiently unshell as we worked, and then push towards me. Yom fil mishmish, we would say, as we ate his apricots, literally meaning, tomorrow will be good times, and we will eat apricots. But given the long tragedy that has befallen the Palestinians, this phrase has converted into a wistful, tomorrow will never come. Omar, a polyglot who spoke German, Hebrew, and English fluently, and who had worked as a teacher in the court of King Hussein in Jordan, was determined I would not only learn Arabic, but the politesse and formalities of Palestinian society. He drilled into me what to say when someone offered me food, Islamu Idaik, may God bless your hands, or when a woman entered the room, al Nawar al Bayt, you light up the house, or when someone brought me a small cup of sugary Arabic coffee, a phrase that meant, may we always drink coffee together in an occasion like this. Omar had a fondness for the Lebanese child singer Remy Bondali, a fondness I did not share, but on his insistence, I memorized the lyrics to several of her songs. He told long, involved, shaggy dog jokes in Arabic and made me commit them to memory, although sometimes the humor was lost on me. It was armed with this cultural and linguistic fluency that I first reported from Gaza, carefully removing my shoes before entering the cramped concrete hovels in Palestinian refugee camps, hovels that on the inside were always immaculately clean. When a plate of rice or coffee was brought to me, I responded with the polites Omar taught me. The fact that I had taken the time to learn to be polite melted even the most suspicious of hearts. It immediately opened the door to friendships that would last years. In March of 1991, I was in Basra, Iraq, during the Shiite uprising as a reporter for the New York Times. I had entered Kuwait with the Marine Corps and then left them behind to cover the fighting in Basra. I was taken prisoner by the Iraqi Republican Guard, who in the chaos, whole army units had defected to join the rebels, had ripped their Republican Guard patches off their uniforms so as not to be identified with the regime of Saddam Hussein. I was studiously polite because of Omar with my interrogators. I swiftly struck up conversations with my guards. My facility in Arabic rendered me human. And when I ran out of things to say, I told the long, shaggy dog jokes taught to me by Omar. Perhaps it was my accented Arabic, but my guards found these jokes unfailingly amusing. I spent a week as a prisoner. I slept and ate with Iraqi soldiers, developed friendships with some, including the major who commanded the unit. And there were several moments when trapped in heavy fighting with the rebels, they shielded and protected me. One afternoon in the driving rain, I was seated in a Pajero Jeep, hot-wired and stolen by my Iraqi captors during the frantic flight from Kuwait City. We had stopped to fill our canteens from muddy puddles. All of the water purification plants had been bombed. The muck and rainwater had already turned my own guts inside out. As I made my way to the brackish pools, I noticed a woman and two small children scooping up their hands to drink. I knew what the foul water would do to these innocents. And in the cold downpour recited W.H. Auden's epitaph on a tyrant as a kind of quiet, unintelligible blessing. Perfection of a kind was what he was after. And the poetry he invented was easy to understand. He knew human folly like the back of his hand and was greatly interested in armies and fleets. When he laughed, respectable senators burst with laughter. And when he cried, the little children died in the streets. 
I would hear the Iraqi soldiers whisper at night about what would happen to me once I was turned over to the secret police or Muhabarat, something they and I knew was inevitable and dreaded. That day came. I was flown on a helicopter to Baghdad and handed to the Muhabarat, whose dead eyes and cold demeanor reminded me of the East German Stasi. There was no bantering now. I was manhandled and pushed forcefully into a room and left there without food or water for 24 hours. I awoke the next day to the plaintive call to prayer, the Athan, as the first pale light crept over the city. God is greater. There is no God but Allah. Muhammad is the messenger of God. I went to the window and saw the heavily armed guards in the courtyard below. I did not know if I would live or die. At dawn, the women and often children climbed to the flat roofs in Baghdad to bake bread in rounded clay ovens. I was famished. I called out in Arabic to these women, I am an American journalist. I am a captive. I have not eaten. A mother handed fresh bread to her young son who scampered across the roofs to feed me. A few hours later, I was turned over to the International Committee for the Red Cross and driven to Jordan and freedom. Where are they now, these men and women who showed me such compassion, who ignored the role my own country had played in their oppression to see me as one of them? How can I repay this solidarity and empathy? How can I live to be like them? I owe Omar, I owe all these people, some of whom I did not know, the miracle of human kindness and my life. I am Chris Hedges for the Amir Stein Center. Wow, guys, it's good to show kindness. You can see, he learned a lot from Muslims in the essence that when you go to a Muslim home, you have to remove your shoe from outside. That's the courtesy. You have to remove your shoe. You don't enter the house with your slippers or your shoe. And they're so welcoming. You know, he's telling us what he learned from Palestinians, you know, Muslims. And the fact that the, the guy gave him a bowl of rice. The guy was so nice to him. He even got into trouble so many times and he got help from, you know, from a Palestinian, a Muslim. He got an helping hand. So he was just trying to narrate to us that they are the nicest of people. They are very kind, kind-hearted. You know, the miracle of kindness. When you do kind to people, you receive double. That's why in Quran they say, whoever do good deeds will receive from Allah. That's the reason why they treat from them. It's, they are used to the fact that they render helping ends to people and that was a beautiful one i really enjoyed guys and that's a wrap guys don't forget to smash that subscribe button for more like share and comment i'll see you in the next one bye